Hi, welcome to week two of building scalable distributed systems. This is the week where we're going to focus on concurrency and specifically how to write concurrent multi-threaded programs in Java. This is the book, which is kind of the Bible of uh, concurrency in Java. Uh, this definitely would be where you should go for the full coverage. Um, in this uh, module, we're just going to cover the essential topics that you need within this course. We're also not going to cover the um, more advanced, uh, more abstract functional methods of, that are available in Java 8. So this is very much a Java 7 um, coverage of, of threading so that you get to understand the fundamental mechanisms that underlie um, any sort of concurrency system in any language. So we'll look at what threads are and we'll give some examples. We'll also look at the problems that we get with threads and how threads need to coordinate, the states that threads go through, how we can build thread pools as uh, collections of threads to do work for us, and also how we can build thread safe collections such as lists. So why do we need threads? Threads are essential within a system, a distributed system, because concurrency is absolutely core to any distributed system. If you think about it, if we have two nodes communicating, then they are executing in parallel, even if they're running on different machines. One will be sending a message, the other will be receiving it, and they'll, they'll be exchanging messages in parallel. If you don't use threads, you just write a single threaded Java program, what you get is a, a process essentially. And a process has a single thread which can be executed on a core within a node. So here you see in this top figure, we have a multi-core processor which can execute four processes at any time because it has four cores. And processes basically have a main thread and they will they will execute that main thread, but if we create more threads inside our process, we can execute a thread. It will then um, stop for a moment while another thread executes. And then when that thread is completed or is con has executed for a sufficient time slice, the other thread will continue. So the difference is that in a single thread process, we only have one thread which can be executed by a core. In a multi-threaded process, we have potentially multiple threads that can be executed across multiple cores at the same time. So with multiple threads, we can exploit the performance available in multi-core processes. The difference between a thread and a process is illustrated here. So in a process, you have a code segment and it has access to registers and its stack, the call stack, which is used for function calls and basically it executes the code, um, building the stack up as you go through and call, process, call methods and create objects, etc. cetera. Um, every process has its own global data and a set of resources. Here it's just shown as files, but there's other things in there such as network sockets, etc. So this is a single threaded process, just got one thread of execution. On the right here, we have a, a process again, it's exactly the same. It has a data segment, file handles, code segment, but it has multiple threads. And each thread basically has its own stack and copy of the registers on the machine. So that when it executes, it has its own execution context. And the threads basically can execute independently. They still have a share of the global data and they all execute the underlying code but they can be executing this code in different places because they have their own call stack and copies of registers. When the process is executing multiple threads what happens is it context switches between threads so one thread will execute for a, a small amount of time and then after that time is complete or it, it waits for some event another thread will be executed. Because all of this occurs in the same process, spot, uh, context switching between a thread is much cheaper than context switching between processes because that involves the operating system um, to actually do the context switch, whereas here we're doing the context switch within the same process. So threads are lightweight, 
and somewhat faster than running multiple processes. So a process is our different executables. And every process has its own virtual address space, code, security context, environment variables that are passed to it when it starts, handles to system objects, and one thread of execution. And any process uh, can create multiple threads internally. Threads are lightweight compared to processes. They share the same address space and share the same data and code, but they have their own stack space so that they can handle um, independent execution. They can execute the shared code at different spots at the same time. The threads are context switched within the process, and this is less expensive than doing it between processes and threads can communicate much more cheaply than inter-process communication. So when a thread needs to pass some data to another thread, it's passed within the same process uh, context. It doesn't require the operating system to do a context switch and, and invoke another process. So threads are sort of lightweight and cheap. Let's look at a thread in Java. It's very simple. Basically, we have to write a class that implements the runnable interface and overrides the run method. So very simple. Run is what is called when we create a thread and call its start method. So we never call run directly. We call start on the thread object that we create. Let's look at a very simple example again. So here's a class called naming thread that implements runnable. It has a constructor, which you just pass a, th a string to, and it stores this as its name. And it has a run method, which very simply says, I've been called, and here's my name. And this is some information about the thread that the JVM will print out for us. Um, Thread.current thread, it prints out the, the, the name of the thread as known by the JVM, and a couple of other things, its priority and its parent thread. You'll see that when we execute it in a second. So very simple, implement runnable and override run. Here's some code which creates some threads uh, that we saw on the previous slide. So this is sort of longhand. We have a naming thread, which we pass a name to the constructor. We then create a thread with each of these runnables. So each of these implements runnable, and we pass that runnable to a thread object, which we create, and then we start the threads. This calls our run method. And then in the main thread, what we're gonna do, the main thread is independent to these three threads. So we have three threads plus the main thread running. So there's four threads running in this example. The main thread is gonna sleep for a second and then print out some information about itself. Sleeping for a particular time, waiting for the other threads to finish is a really bad idea, and we'll show you how to do it much better in a moment, but it's just an example. So we create three threads, we wait for them to finish, and we print out some information. Okay, so next, go to this YouTube video and you'll see some examples of running this code, and it'll give you some insights into the way threads are executed by the JVM. The basic um, intuition is that they are executed in a non-deterministic fashion. Hence, the order of execution of threads is not governed by your code uh, in this particular case. The order of statements that are executed is governed by the scheduler of the Java virtual machine and essentially the operating system. So run that, that example um, video and then come back to the next slide. So you saw there that the threads execute non-deterministically. And we also said that the waiting for a particular period of time was a really bad idea in the main thread. We want to be able to coordinate the threads much more um, sensibly so that the, the main thread isn't, isn't uh, dependent on a, the threads executing very quickly. One thread may execute for a very long time. We don't want the main thread to time out and terminate before all the threads are completed. We can do this using the join method of threads. So here's a way to do this. We basically create some handles for our threads. 
we create the runnables and store a reference to each runnable within within our um, array, and we start each runnable. So our threads are all now running, but in our main thread, instead of waiting and sleeping, we just go through a loop and we wait for each to complete. So join returns when the thread is terminated. So here we just go through a loop and we wait for each one to terminate in order. And um, this is a much more um, robust way of waiting for threads to terminate. And again, go to YouTube and you'll see an execution example of this and uh, another example to show you sort of the random interleavings that you get when you execute multiple threads. So the key points so far, we create threads by implementing a runnable. We start the threads by calling the start method, not the run method, and this returns immediately. This makes the thread available for execution by the JVM. Threads execute independently until they complete, and the order of thread execution is not governed by your code. It's non-deterministic, governed by the scheduler. One more thing. Threads and objects are what are known as orthogonal concepts. If you think about it, back to your um, object-oriented design uh, courses and training, Objects are basically state machines. They have data, they have methods, and the methods interact with the data to basically give you some state transitions um, that can be invoked on that particular object. Threads are an execution context. Threads define a, a sequence of statements that are executed, and they manipulate the state of objects that they have references to. So the methods, when a thread calls a method of an object, that method executes within the context of the calling thread. So if you think about it in terms of operating systems, each thread has a call stack, and when it makes a call to the method in an object, then that, that method is actually put on the stack of the calling thread. Multiple threads can call the same object and same method in the same object, and all of those method calls will be will be managed on the individual stacks of each thread. So this illustrates the example, uh, the, the concept. Sorry. So we have the threads here, a bunch of objects which are on the, the shared memory, the heap within the JVM. And each thread has references to different objects. So this reference here, we have two references in different threads to the, the same object. As this has a, a reference to this object, and this has a reference to object five. So here we have two threads sharing the same object. They can call methods on object three independently. And those calls are managed on the stack of each thread. So basically it means that objects can be shared between threads. There's only one object here, it has its own state, but it's being manipulated by two different threads. And this is one of the reasons that threads get tricky. And that's what we'll start to examine in the next section.